Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode, we built out these composables that we see here on the emulator, basically items that we can display as a grid or items we can display in a list here. And we are only fetching one character at, at a time at the moment, but eventually we're supposed to get a list of characters here. So today we're gonna go ahead and start the screen that's gonna be displaying that list. Let's just go ahead and get started here. Let's just uh, pop over to our documentation here. We see we have a get endpoint for uh, just regular characters, not just one individual. So this is a paginated endpoint in the sense that there are 826 characters but and 42 pages. So there are only going to be you know a certain number of results per page. As the user scrolls the screen, we're gonna have to fetch new pages to accomplish that infinite scroll here. And we could see this question mark page equals you know, the page number uh, is how we can go ahead and fetch individual pages. But all of the results here are just regular uh, characters that we've seen. And then this uh, little info object is also on the network response here. So off camera, I've gone ahead and just done a few things, pretty straightforward, just wanna cover them real quick though. In our KTOR client here, our, our networking package here, we have a get character by page function. We take in that page number and it's gonna return the API operation of a character page. We'll see all of this other stuff that we kind of just talked about here for the actual endpoint. The body here is going to be parsed as a remote character page and then we call a to domain character page function on it. If we take a look here at the actual data class, we see basically the uh, info and the results. We already have the remote character as a class and that just maps directly to info and then results right here, right? So we're able to kind of construct the network response model from previous models. We have a little bit of, uh, you know, that mapping from remote to domain or network to domain. Really pretty straightforward. We had a mapping function from character to, you know, remote character to domain character. So everything is all good there. And then this is just a simple data class that we're going to use at the domain layer. That's just called the character page. So it's going to have that networking info again and then have the list of characters to display here. So that's really about it. Pretty straightforward. Not a lot done off camera. As we jump into this here, um, smash that like button. Let me know how I'm doing in the comments below and let's just, uh, let's just get after it. So we do need another um, composable here to be the screen that we want to display, right? And actually we have the character detail screen is our default one. So we're going to go ahead and change that. We are going to come up with a composable here. The route is going to be like our home screen is what we'll call it. And then we're just going to go ahead and open up those uh, brackets. We're going to go ahead and copy and paste here. So now our start destination is this new screen that we're going to be building out. We're going to go over here. We're going to go ahead and create a new screen. We're going to call it home screen and it is going to be a composable named home screen of course and uh let's see what do we need here well we're going to be displaying a list of uh characters here so we are going to need uh some kind of home screen view model which we will go ahead and create we're going to of course have our at inject constructor so we can go ahead and add that in and then we're going to annotate this with the at hilt view model uh yep we are using hilt if this is just your first episode here and inside of our home screen we are going to have the view model here and we will have this set to the hilt view model and then the only other thing that we're going to need here is we're going to need um you know like on character selected callback here uh this is going to take an integer and return nothing and uh, that's basically about it right we're just going to handle some user interactions on those different cards there to navigate to a different screen all right we'll get to building out that screen in a little bit but we need to do something with that uh, networking layer that we talked about earlier so we have a character repository this has one suspend function in it to fetch a particular character so we're just going to go ahead and add another one in here suspend function fetch character page. This function here is going to take in a page and it's going to return back the API operation uh, of that particular character page type. And we're just going to interact with our KTOR client, get character by page, and we will say page number equals page. Very, very straightforward. So now we can go ahead and call this function, whether we're trying to fetch the first page, the third page, the 40th page, etc. right? We're just gonna use one function that's gonna return us the API operation of a particular page. So we're gonna go ahead and take this character repository. 
we're gonna go back home screen here. We're going to create the uh, character repository dependency here. And we'll see because we're using Hill, we get that immediately. So we're inside of here now, we have access to that function, everything's starting to come together here. Let's go ahead and create a little bit of a uh, sealed interface. We're just gonna call this the home screen view stage, you know what's happening here if you've seen something before, or if you've been following along with this channel here. So we're going to call this the uh, loading state here. And now we need something to display here. So we see on the right here, we have these different grid kind of cells here. So we're going to go ahead and create a class here that kind of encapsulates the uh, grid variant of how we want to display our characters. And so for lack of a better term, let's just go with a uh, grid display. Let's say this is going to have a list of our characters here that we want to display in that grid fashion. This is of course going to extend our home screen view state. And if we wanted to, we can handle like error states and eventually the list display and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we're just going to leave it at this for now. And uh, we can go ahead and start using this kind of information inside of our view model. All right, and quite simply here, we're gonna have our private val mutable state flow here of that uh, view state default to loading. And then we have that public immutable uh, state flow that we're just gonna go ahead and observe at the uh, home screen, the composable level. And so as I mentioned earlier, the, right, this screen is going to be paginated. So there's going to kind of be uh, two functions I'm just gonna build out here, one to actually kind of fetch the initial page. Let's call this fetch initial page, sure. And then we're gonna have another function that's just gonna be called fetch next page. And we're not gonna worry about the pagination in this episode, we'll get to this implementation later. But basically when we go to the screen, right, we're gonna to wanna to have the initial page kind of fetched. And then as the user scrolls the screen, and let's say there's 25 items on the screen, once they get to maybe item 20, we're gonna to wanna to fetch the next page so that by the time they get to the next element after that, we're then able to, you know, that network operation is already happening, we get the next page, we append it to the list, and hopefully we come up with like a seamless infinite scroll kind of situation to the user. So anyway, our fetch uh, initial page is what we're gonna do at this point for this episode. And we're just gonna take the view model scope, launch a coroutine, and we're going to say, uh, let's go with the initial page is going to be the character repository, fetch character page, and where our page is going to be equal to one. And then we can go ahead and just operate on this, right? In the success case, we'll do something. In the failure case, we'll do something else. And then we're going to uh, update our view state here. And we're gonna say return at update. This is going to be a, uh, let's go with grid display of uh, where the characters is going to be equal to the character page dot characters. We'll go ahead and implement an empty state in uh, a different episode here, but pretty straightforward. We're just gonna go ahead and launch uh, this grid display here with the stuff we get back from the API. Looks pretty good for now. We'll to do out this one as well. And then we're just gonna go ahead and uh, observe this, right? So our uh, view state is going to be equal, or sorry, it's going to be by view model dot view state dot collect as state. And then we can just operate with this view state here. So we're just gonna say uh, val state equals our view state because we need to save it. And then we're simply going to add the remaining branches in and then we have our grid display and we have our loading. So at this point, we already have a loading state as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and leverage that. And then here is where we're gonna go ahead and implement the grid display. So let's go ahead and let's say the lazy vertical grid columns gonna be grid cells dot fixed at two to keep it at two columns. And then the content here is just going to be our, what we need to display for each individual column item. We're gonna then go ahead and leverage the items here, right? And then we're going to say items equals our state dot characters, the key is going to be a function that gives us the character back. And then we need that should not be an integer, let's just go with it dot ID. And then we put this here. Yeah, okay. So it took a tiny bit to recognize that it was the character at first, it thought it was an integer. That's why it was all freaking out. Now inside of this block is where we're going to leverage the item that we want to display character grid items, I'm gonna go ahead and just have a modifier there for right now. And then at this point here, we can just rename this little variable that gets passed to us. That's going to be our character. And then here, 
Uh, I believe this is the on click. Yep, when that character is clicked. So we can just, you know, to do handle on click for right now. Actually, this is even easier. We already have the on character selected, right? That was the idea of it. So we'll have the on character selected and then we will just say character.id because that was the concept of it there. And that is hopefully about it. Our home screen, we can just quickly add in to the main activity over here. We're gonna simply call the home screen uh, composable at that point. And then what do we need here? We just need the on character selected is going to be this. And then we're going to, to do navigate to a different page as soon as I can spell. All right, let's give this a whirl. Let's see how this turns out. All right, and the app is booting back up. We see our loading state, and we only ever see our loading state. What happened here? I know exactly what's happening. We never tell our view model to do anything. <laughs> we never fetch the initial page here. What was I thinking? Man, thought I'd be able to get through one of these, launching it correctly. Uh, our key one is going to be unit here. The block that's going to run is going to be view, view model dot fetch initial page at this point. You could actually set our key one here to the view model itself that's here so that anytime that view model gets destroyed and recreated, then we know that we're actually, uh, this launched effect is gonna run. It's doing something similar to the concept of launching something at first time you go to the screen. And here we go, we have, albeit um, not the most beautiful list in the world, but we do have a list here. Let's take a look and see how we can kind of clean this up. If you made it this far in the video, smash that like button to help me out. Subscribe if you are brand new. And let's go ahead and see what do we need here. I think we need some content padding. It was called content padding and that equals padding values. All is going to be, um, let's just keep it at 16 DP because that is a very normal uh, look, rerunning, see what happens. I think we're going to also need some uh, padding within the elements. Yeah, so that gave us 16 DP all around the elements, but now we need basically some item spacing. And so what we're going to do here is say vertical arrangement equals arrangement spaced by 8 DP, and that should put 8 DP in between all of our items vertically speaking, right? And we're going to go ahead and do something very similar for our horizontal arrangement. And yeah, I guess eight, why not? We can just go ahead and leave it like that. And rerunning here, we're gonna put now, um, you know, space in the horizontal direction as well. So now we kind of have a reasonable looking grid. We are seeing that there are some elements of this uh, grid that are bigger than the other because of the name of the character, but I don't know. Truthfully, that's not the end of the world. We can always clean that up if need be. Scrolling through here, it seems like everything is working as expected. There seems to be a broken image URL there, but that's not our fault. However, we do notice that we do, when we get to the bottom of the page, we, uh, we stop scrolling, right? We're only fetching one page at a time. Uh, so in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and clean that up. We're going to make sure that this continues to scroll. We'll even handle the click here when, to navigate to the next page and all that kind of stuff to actually kind of put together a little bit of, uh, you know, the app and functionality and such. So uh, if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you. Smack that like button to help me out. Subscribe if you're brand new. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.